We're back, everybody. Episode 68 of A to Z Sports Talk. I'm AJ here with my co-host, Zach. And I want to start us off with thanking everybody for uh, now at 5,500 followers on TikTok. And we're 15 away from 600 on Instagram. Oh, damn. I went live last night at like 1 a.m. Central time here. On TikTok? Yeah, just kind of bored. I didn't think we'd get many, maybe like 50 people on there. We had 400 people on there at 1 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. So maybe that's a hot time to go do it. I also want to thank people for the views already uh, on YouTube for Caroline Ortiz interview that we did. Mm -hmm. It's already at 130, I believe. Oh, dang. Really solid. People people like Caroline. So, but Zach, how you doing, my man? I am doing good. Just (laughs) been working. Nothing really uh, Mm -hmm. exciting happened with me yet this week. Yeah. How about you? Pretty good. I mean, we just saw each other like two days ago, so I know. <laughs> not, not a whole lot in between. But uh, yeah, yeah, we man, filmed good. on Monday, right? Yeah, we had to film on Monday. You know, with with the editing and the posting, I feel like because I, I I edit our uh, TikTok videos, and so with you, man, I feel like I'm especially when I make videos like the Jaguars one I made, mm-hmm. where it's just pretty much you talking. I feel like I see you every single day because it's just like <laughs> your face is. You get to hear my beautiful voice. <laughs> yeah um but we have what, did you see I, I do have a question for you what time yeah. do you post the the player of the nights man so it's usually like, like i try to wait till the last game ends either nba or nhl so it's probably like midnight or one but i again i work overnight so i'm, yeah. I'm up editing like the other night bro i think i edited like five or six hours of con or i edited not five or six hours of content but i hour uh i edited content for five or six hours and it just helped me through my whole shift so i have videos lined up to where i can literally just press you know post and it's out there for us so that's nice yeah it's very nice um but we have our did you see it we have some nhl talk nba college basketball college football and nfl uh it's going to be another fun episode i want to get us started with our did you see it um mine has to be the sacramento king's purple light beam that they're they're setting off have you seen that? Oh, after they win, they shoot. After up they in win, the sky. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you awesome. can't see, you can't see like the peak of it, like it's so high up in the air. That's awesome. It's not real original because it's kind of what the uh, Los Angeles Angels do. So they light up that big A after oh, they win. They? But I kind of like the purple light beam more. And I, I, I honestly, bro, like the Kings are playing such good basketball. Like, it's it must be fun to be a Kings fan right now. And also, yeah, they're I, winning it all. <laughs> yeah. and it's probably the most fun thing a Kings fan has had in years <laughs> to, yeah, to look for forward real. to because they they I think they have the longest streak yeah out of like anyone to not make the playoffs I yeah believe. it's like 15 16 years <clears throat> it's insane but yeah that, that caught my eye this week um I had a couple did you see it's okay I forgot about one already <laughs> but one I actually like saved was for the Cheese It Bowl, um, four players involved in the two Cheese It Bowl games will be staying in the feeling the cheesiest hotel rooms. And it's basically a hotel room, just all the wallpapers red. It's like cheese, it's like cheese it themed. Uh I don't know if you can see it uh-huh. if I hold it up. Let's see. What, what's the point of it? What what's oh, okay? I can see a little bit. What if I go closer now? That makes it work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What in the world? Why? It's pretty cool. I'd Is it just for it. fun? Yeah. That's crazy. It's like the commercial <laughs> where it's like, I'm feeling the cheesy. Yeah, coach. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking of. Um, What else did I have? I feel like I had something. Um, For the 2024-2025 season, college football will have a 12-team mm-hmm. or 12-team uh, playoff. Yep. Um, yep, I like that. Antonio Brown apparently is like got arrested and is apparently locked himself in his house right now and in a standoff with the police. I did not know about that. I did see what was the Odell Beckham Jr. situation. He got escorted off a plane or something. I don't know. He was acting up on a plane or something. It's the type of person Jerry Jones loves to have on his team <laughs> to reform him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else though? Or was that it? Um, I think that was it. Yeah. And again, um, only a, only a couple days in between here, so. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, right on. So. Oh no, um, no, no, I got one more. I got one more. Yeah, what's up? Uh, the Cardinals are in talks, or talked to Wilson Contreras today in Florida. Oh. And the talks went good. I don't want him though. 
So I saw uh, Mo said the one thing they're like the number one thing they're looking for is like everyday catcher. That's the one thing mm-hmm. they're they're trying to get. So it's pro- I mean it's got to be I want to say it's got to be uh, <laughs> Contreras or Sean Murphy, but I could see us doing like Tucker Barnhart <laughs> just... oh, or Danny Jansen. I was kind of yeah, I'm I didn't so- yeah, I'm fine that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know his stats were that good. Mm-hmm. Well, he didn't. He didn't get to play a whole lot last year because Kirk just took over for the yeah. for the Jays. But... I don't want Kirk. Why not? Just because he just seems like he does not care about his body at all, and he that's will true. get a downfall at some point. That yeah, yeah, that's very true. That's very true. He's gonna be like um, Pablo the Panda, one of yeah, my favorite players. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. I mean, think about it. Sandoval had a really good stretch there, and then just literally could not keep his weight mm-hmm. down. <laughs> yeah, which is awful. Um, in the NHL, let's start with the Blues. They lost to the Stars 4-1 to the other night. That was our only game in between episodes here. They play again tonight versus the Hurricane, a chance to bounce back uh, against a tough team in the Hurricanes. But uh, the Stars are just flat out a better team than us right now. Um, I thought we played pretty solid. We had chances, a lot of chances, actually, and just didn't execute them. So I, I don't look at I – mean, 4-1 looks really bad, man, but I didn't think it was that bad of a loss for us. Um but again, it's it's just I hate having this kind of backtrack after that crazy comeback we had against the Panthers that I was telling you about. Yeah. Uh, so I I hate having that happen. But again, you mentioned I think two episodes two episodes ago you went through kind of our schedule coming up. You talked about like Lightning, the Panthers. Like, mm-hmm. do we have a bunch of tough teams coming up? So we gotta gotta keep it going. We're sitting at five hundred right now, eleven and eleven or twelve and twelve. It's one of those two. So we gotta gotta uh, keep it rolling. We are eleven eleven. Yeah, man. Yeah. So sitting about five hundred. It's not an awful spot to be at. It's not awful. Um, not great. We're tied. Great we're technically either. tied for fourth. Minnesota and Nashville both have twenty two points mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. There was a game that caught my eye this week, though. The <laughs> Kraken beat the Kings nine to eight. <laughs> nine to eight. Seventeen goals were scored. Dang. I think at the end of the, I want to say the second, it was eight to six. Fourteen goals in two periods. That's pretty insane. That's crazy. Um, couple other storylines. Blake Wheeler with three goals and an assist and a five nothing win versus the Avalanche. We absolutely love when the Avalanche lose, especially in that way. Who's Blake Wheeler? Uh he's the captain for the for the Winnipeg Jets. Mm. Yes, sir. He's not he's not much of a scorer either. I put him as our player of the night the other night because three goals and one assist in a game of Hattie is a pretty solid night. Um couple other things that caught my eye. I mentioned last episode Mitch Marner's red hot for the Leafs. Now he's got an 18-game point streak, which is the Maple Leafs record, and that's pretty, pretty substantial because the Probably Leafs have been good, around, yeah, yeah for forever. Um, and then the last NHL thing that caught my eye this week: Alexander Ovechkin, really cool stat. We all know he's one of the best ever. Passes Wayne Gretzky for the most away goals on the road in NHL history with like 430 something, I think it was. That I mean, that's an absolutely amazing record. Now, do yeah. I? I don't know if he's going to reach the all-time record. I think he's like eighty or ninety away, or maybe mm-hmm. even more. I have to I have to double double check that. But um, that's a pretty amazing record to have. Yeah, the most away goals ever. He's just been so consistent, man, for years. Also, and years. kind of a weird stat. It's just <laughs> kind of oh, it's let's see yeah. what record Wayne Gretzky yeah. has that can get. Beaten. Exactly. Oh, exactly. I, I was thinking about that when I, when I saw that stat and I was writing it down. Full shot thinking, moving to your left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like they're coming out with those stats all the time now. Yeah. Where um, someone does something that's first player and second player to have a 25 points, two rebounds, yeah. four assists game in the last <laughs> yeah. whatever. It's, yeah. They always pick weird numbers just to. It's the first that player person. with like. Three shots on net on November third or something like that. It's yeah. something like crazy. Yeah. Um, that's all I had NHL wise. A couple of big things that caught my eye this week. Moving on to NBA. Um, I brought in another would you rather king of the court, whatever you want to call it. This episode we're gonna do Bradley Beal. So mm. they're not all shooting guards. I don't think they all can play shooting guard, but a couple of them are kind of run the point a little bit. But also. Uh, I guess we can do that first, but I brought in some topics that I, I want to ask you about and talk to because it's some teams like that are all about 500, I guess the Mavs, mm-hmm. the Bulls and the Jazz, or the, not the Jazz, the, uh, the Wolves. Yeah. And I want to, I want to see what you think about them, but we can do the, would you rather first? So Brad Beal or Drew Holiday, which one are you taking? 
Because mm. you're going to get the offense with Brad Beal. You're going to get the solid offense, but really good defense with Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday is like your type of player, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm doing Drew <laughs> Holiday. You can do it all. Uh huh. I think I'll go Beal slightly. Yeah, you would. Just slightly offensive guy here. <laughs> um, Does Bradley this- Beal have a championship? No. He's never yeah, going to okay. win one. He's never going to win one in Washington either. Hey, Chris um, Stapps has been playing good. I know you don't like him, yeah, but... That's true. That's true. Um, Actually, he had a 41-point game the other night. I was just thinking about that. Mm-hmm. I, I, before we keep going here, I was thinking how Porzingis... Um, ha, remember how he started... He's had a streaky career, I should say. He started out... Uh, being hated by all Knicks fans. Remember whenever he got mm-hmm. drafted, kind of like a, yeah. a kind of a joke. Uh, like oh, the Knicks drafted Kristaps Porzingis, but then he played really well. He was averaging like twenty two and ten over his first couple years, um, or nineteen and ten, something like that. Yeah, and it was it was a lot of work with him in the mid range. I saw a video somebody made about this, and a lot of his work was in the mid range. And then they would stretch him out on on you know uh, pick and rolls, and they would fade him on pick and rolls or flare him, I should say. And uh, he could stretch the forward by hitting threes. He went to Dallas, mm-hmm. and they only had him shooting threes. Like, literally, he was just a three point guy. Like, yeah. he was, his, remember we were talking? He got like five or six rebounds a game because he had him. He uh, stretched out so much. And I think their point was to clear room for Luca to create. Yeah. But now we've seen in Washington, even though they're bad, he's kind of getting back to that mid range killer again. Yeah. And then also being able to shoot the three. And I wonder, like, we're going to talk about the match. He's also seven second. foot tall, so, like, being around the basket's a good thing. Yeah. And he put a – remember, he came in really skinny, and then he put mm-hmm. on some weight, and it was helping him. I think the Mavs kind of blew their opportunity with him. Oh, yeah. To be that number two guy. I think he could be that guy that helped. Oh, uh, when I, I played with the Mavs on 2K, but... I know 2K is very realistic and <laughs> exactly like how it is in the real life. Yeah, but... for sure. I would pop off. He would make everything around the basket. I just do a pick and roll with him. Uh-huh. Then Maluka every single time and just he dunks everything. Yeah. yeah. Blocks everything. He's a beast. I wish he would play like that and or the I wish the Mavs would have used him mm-hmm. for Luca's sake. And again, we'll, we'll get into the Mavs in just a second. But uh my next guy for Brad Bradley Beal is Clay Thompson. Now Clay has had a really bad year this year. I mean really mm-hmm. bad. So what do you think? I'd thinking? say now right now, Bradley Beal for sure. Okay. I agree. I agree. I, for me, like, I have a hard time seeing Clay Thompson not turn it around at some point in the season. Uh, but right now, man, he is really – he's shooting poorly. He's uh, a bad defender Didn't he have, like, right a 40-point game the other night? That, oh, yeah, he popped off. He popped off for, like, 41. <clears throat> it's and Clay then, Thompson. And then he anything? played against the uh, Mavs the other night, which they called, like, 12 travels in that game. Isn't that odd? Good. Yeah, I knew you'd say good. <laughs> I, that's it, one reason I hate the NBA is every single play there's a travel. If it's like why back, even have the rule? The, if you look back at the film, I think eleven of the twelve were actually travels. Like the refs did a pretty oh, yeah, good job calling it's, those. It's, I could call the travel in the NBA. It's so blatantly obvious. The crazy thing was, it wasn't anything like a lot of them weren't in the in the lane. A lot of them was like step back threes or like or not even step back threes. Like Steph would Steph got like six travels called on him because he would pump fake and then just take his pivot foot up and then put, pull it back down and they would they just kept calling it. Um, Good. Another guy, the third guy on the list. So you went with Clay Thompson there, or did you go Beal? You went Beal. I, I said Beal also. How about Jamal Murray coming back from an injury? Mm. He's played solid. But let's say let's say fully healthy Jamal Murray. Who are you going with? Bradley Beal. I agree. Brad Beal for me. Now, I saved the best two for last, man. The best two here. Uh, CJ McCollum, mm-hmm. Pelicans point guard slash shooting guard. He's been injured a little bit, but when healthy, we all know what he can do. Beal. Beal? I'm going to go yeah. CJ, man. I'm going to go Beal's CJ. Beal's more athletic. Slightly. Scores way better yeah, than true. CJ. They both can't. They're yeah. both the exact same player and score. And the guy who scores more is Bradley Beal. So it's obviously <laughs> it's <true>. Bradley Beal. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, I like CJ's uh, playmaking a little more than Bradley. That's why I had him over Brad. And then this one, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say. But what about Paul George? Oh, Paul George. That okay, me too. Me too. Okay. <laughs> I didn't didn't know if I could sway you a little bit no, there. Being no, no. Bradley Beal being from St. Louis. No. Uh, um, see, I'm going with Paul George. But around the league. So I have a 
question. I brought in a couple questions for you. So the Mavericks are sitting at 10 and 10. We all know this year Luke has been the MVP. He's been absolutely unreal. How far can the Mavericks go, though? With, they made with it to the Western Luke. Conference Finals last year. I know. So, I know. like, yeah. if they get in, they can win it all. You think they can go all the way? You have Luka. Some, you can uh-huh. go crazy. The if only problem. Guys shoot it around them. Boom. The only problem I have, I think they need, and I don't know if they're going to be able to get this at any point this season. They need another co-star besides, uh, like a Dinwiddie or something, because they did sign Kemba. Kemba, I wonder. I think it's going to be. I don't know if either Kemba's done. I I, I like Kemba, so I, I'm I'm trying mm. to not believe that. Um, but of course he's been missing for a while, so I think he's going to take him some time to get back in back in shape and everything they need somebody though because luca is going to have the ball in his hands all the time they mm-hmm. need somebody as a wing presence or as a big uh and they got christian wood in the off student and he's been good but with all the talent around the league every single team has two superstars uh that are contending so i feel like that's going to catch up to them and i feel like luca's in a situation as much as you hate this i feel luca's in a situation braun was in early in his career where I think Luca can carry a team far into the postseason, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know if that one superstar thing, and it doesn't even have to be a super team, but I think every team that wins a championship right now is going to have two superstars on them. Yeah. Jeez, I didn't realize how good Luca was playing. I didn't realize he was averaging 33 games, he, shooting 50%. Been, mm-hmm. See, yeah. his three ball hasn't been falling. Is it in the, like the 20%? It's 30 30 now it's always not been that great but hey he makes it sometimes <laughs> he, he takes a lot of them too uh, um but man he's, he's been unbelievable another thing so the chicago bulls are sitting at like the 11 seed i believe right now yeah. in the east they're 9 and 12 with demar Derozan and zach levine now zach's missed a little bit of time but are they done that's a really tough eastern conference now yeah i thought they were yeah I, if they're not winning that many games with DeRozan, Levine, uh, Vucevic. Yeah, man. Uh, Guys like Caruso, Patrick Williams. Yeah. It's not looking good. Miami's no, it, 10 and 12. Do they have everyone? They sh- Yeah, they, ha- they have been. Bam, Jimmy, uh, Hero, Lowry. Yeah. But the thing with the Bulls, and I think we've talked about Jimmy's this Jimmy's played 13 games. Okay. I didn't realize that. Um, but with the Bulls, man, like, I'm gonna say it. They're missing Lonzo Ball. They're oh yeah, missing that guy that can push push the pace. Uh, they don't have like Ayo Dusumu is the guy running point for them right now, and he's I've liked him ever since he came out of college. Remember him killing it at Illinois, mm-hmm. like absolute dog in college. But I don't know. I think they really need Lonzo to. Uh, they just need someone who can play defense. It's not yeah yeah. Vucevic, Levine, and DeRozan aren't mm. defensive no. <laughs> defensive guys at no. all. No, not at all. I don't even think Desumo's that. Like, he's he athletic, but he's not. But he's not. He's, he's not so Holiday. young. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He he's so young that I don't think he. Um, they need kind of. The, and it, Lonzo's not old by any means, but Lonzo's more of a veteran presence than and he's yeah. been around and done that. And uh, he's a smarter basketball player. I bet like Lonzo this, and him are like the same age, but Lonzo's been in the league. Longer. I bet, bro. I bet Desumo spent a few years there at uh, Illinois. Let's see if I can. I bet so. Because Lonzo's Lonzo came out when he was 19 years old. But uh Ayo DeSumo. Kind of a fun name. It is a very fun name. All right. DeSumo's 22. I'm saying Lonzo's like 24. Nah. I'm gonna say 24. Or 25. I'm gonna go 24. 25. 25. Okay, three year difference. And I knew but, he wasn't one year older than me. Yeah. But like Dasumu is just a flat out like score. With yeah. with Lonzo, it's like he's always been so smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and though he hasn't lived up to the hype as the number two pick would be, he would be helping out that Bulls team so much right now. I just think they're digging themselves such a big hole early. It's gonna be hard to catch up. That, yeah. that Eastern Conference is loaded. And my other yeah, topic the NBA I, is actually for once in its life, actually uh pretty even all around bro it's been and i love the nba you hate you hate the nba will i watch it no no 
I, I'm telling you right now, it has been the most fun season I've ever I've seen in my life so far. Like it's so much like you like there's favorites in the league. The Celtics are like 18 and four. They've been dominating. But are they like, do I am I confident they're gonna win it all? Not at all. Like Giannis could take over. Um, like there's so many teams that Denver second in the West. Dang. Yeah, I know they got they caught fire. Yeah. Is Michael Porter still like dead? Yep, he's dead still. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's played 16 games. Let's go. I think he's on my fantasy team. I probably should have um, checked that. I haven't checked in probably a month. But like Jokic has is played has played really good, but it's not like his MVP numbers. I mean, it's still yeah, crazy twenty two numbers, a game, but it's not like his twenty nine thirty. You know, um, he's having nine he, rebounds and how many assists? Do you got? Why like don't you just put it, oh yeah, yeah, nine assists and nine. Yeah, rebounds. okay, so yeah, 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 yeah he's affiliating good. more for sure. <laughs> so bad, an, bad another topic I had to bring in was the Timberwolves are a huge disappointment. They're sitting oh, at yeah. eleven and eleven. Is Rudy Gobert? The problem there is he hurting them because I, in my opinion, I think. Oh, I, I had to correct you on something. I looked at the sheet and you said, "Is Rudy Gobert hurting yeah. the Jazz?" And I so was that's why very I said confused. Earlier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Earlier I said uh, I, I corrected myself because I accidentally put the put the Jazz, but no, like, so. Cat Carl Anthony Towns is out right now for like four to six weeks with some kind of calf strain or something. Mm-hmm. Rudy Gobert is going to be in the same situation he was at in Utah. And so I, and last night he had like nine something. He had an awful stat line last night. I don't remember what it was. Uh, but throughout this, throughout this season so far, they have been so bad defensively trying to figure out um, when teams go small, Yeah, who's, who's going to be the number one big. Because Cat, even though he's more athletic than Gobert, he's not keeping up with a lot of these guys. That oh, he doesn't even try to play defense. No, 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 no. So... He's one of it's, my least favorite players. He it's a tough situation. Me. I agree. Yeah. I, I think Rudy Gobert is a bad fit there. Because it's not... Remember when AD and DeMarcus Cousins were just like hooping like crazy when they were together that Who? small amount of time? Uh, Boogie and AD. Oh, yeah. It's not all like that. Because Rudy is... Even though I, I'm not a Rudy hater, I think he provides a lot defensively and a lob threat. It's not like where Boogie and AD can ISO and then like move really well like Rudy Gobert is pretty limited yes he thrives in what he does but he's very limited if that makes sense mm-hmm. but I don't know man I, I think it's a uh gonna be interesting because uh, Anthony Edwards has been streaky um they have some other pieces that have been solid but I thought they were gonna be a lot better off right right off the bat here than they have been yeah they're still like Rudy's probably by far their best defensive player and they have really not good. D'Angelo Russell, he doesn't play defense. No, no. Anthony Edwards, I'm just assuming he doesn't. He just he he's just, athletic, but yeah. I mean, he he'll he'll go he'll go snatch a block and then get in the passing lane and get a steal every once in a while. But overall, it's tough. And you're gonna hate me. You're about to you're about to hate my guts. <laughs> but <laughs> bro, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the Lakers right now. Oh, I thought you were talking not. about the Timberwolves. No, no, no. I am not worried. Even though you've played the probably Lakers. the worst teams ever in the last no. week? No, so yes, but they also started with the hardest schedule in the NBA to start off the season. Are you going to say, but, oh, we beat the Timberwolves, or not the, the Trailblazers? The Blazers, yeah. Without Damian Lillard. Without Damian. I might add. I was going to say, watching Simons last night, that dude's so underrated. That dude is so good anthony Simons really? is so good dude like he's so athletic but there was a stretch wasn't last he in night. the dunk contest he was yeah yeah there was a stretch last night uh and i i texted a buddy i might have texted you too I, it was the most fun three minutes of basketball i've ever seen in my life like braun had a crazy dunk but russ like had a buzzer beater and then had another buzzer beater the next quarter from half court uh, Shade and Sharp for the Blazers. This was like besides the half court shot. This was all in a row. Mm-hmm. Anthony Simons had three crazy buckets in a row, like a Euro reverse lay. And then uh, Shade and Sharp, who was like the seventh overall pick this year, came in flying on a putback dunk. Like it was the, it was like the whole crowd was hype. It was a really good atmosphere. But no, so the Lakers are sitting in eight and 12 right now. And uh, they have a really tough schedule coming up if you look at it. They play the Wizards. That's the only easy one. But they play the Bucks. Hey, Chris stops a goat. They, they, yeah. 
Kristaps and, and Beal and uh, they they could definitely Kuzma's averaging twenty out. a game too. Yeah, he's streaky, but when he's on, he's on. Uh, but no, man, the Lakers have like I think it's the Cavs coming up at some point, but they have the Raptors next week. They have the Bucks on Friday, man. It's going to be a tough schedule coming up. But sitting at eight and twelve, not good. But I'm looking at these pieces, and a lot of people like you call me crazy for saying I'm not worried about him. But Braun is playing out of his mind right now. AD's looked like a dog late, lately. Uh, people aren't talking about like um, Thomas Bryant, a big they got in the offseason that had missed most of the year, and now he's back. He's He doesn't drop anything when, he, when Braun makes a pass into him. Yeah. He's very sure-handed. Uh, very efficient, man. Very efficient. And Dennis Schroeder, even though Dennis is kind of erratic sometimes, just another ball handler. I like right? Dennis. So speedy. He's so speedy. I'm not. I'm not that worried about Patrick now, Beverly's averaging four a game. <laughs> I know. Offensively, we talked about that last episode. He has been so bad offensively. Defensively, he's he's still a pest. Um, what's his What's his three point percentage? Because it's like low twenties, I believe. It's really uh, twenty three. Yeah, it's really bad. Anthony Davis is his 23. Yeah. And he's not, yeah, he's not, not taking it. LeBron's is 32. LeBron's was 23 before these last three games. And then he shot like 15. LeBron's shooting 23. way too many threes. I look yeah. at the box score and half his shots are threes. Yeah. Yeah. He's, well, he's at the, he's at the point now where he can't attack as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, he can't turn the corner on guys as much. So I think he's he, shedding a tear when you see him shoot no, a three. No, I'm not because he's still dropping like 30. On like last night was six for eight from three, uh, against the Spurs the other night he had seven for ten from three. Like it's just been I I I, I'm very happy. I was I was hyped up last night because like that dunk, bro, where his head's at the rim and he's almost forty years Mm -hmm. old. It's like, uh, it's like a little kid all over again, man. I'm I'm hyped up. Um, do you know Shaq can still dunk and he's like fifty plus fifty plus, but it's like. Shaq's not flying in the air like that. Like LeBron went for a three, threw it to Thomas Bryant while he was in midair, and then sprinted in the lane. And he jumped so high and so fast that Nurkic like was like made made a business decision like I'm not going to be part of this poster. Yeah, man, I was I was hyped up, bro. Uh, I think that's all. Can't I wait till AD day. gets hurt, and then you uh, start hating Russell Westbrook for no reason, like always later in the <laughs> what season. What do you mean? What do you mean? Hate you always Russell you'll like. You'll be on Russell Westbrook, and then he starts playing, has a couple bad games. You're like, this guy's off. He needs to be off the Lakers. I think my problem, else. I think my problem is last year, like, <clears throat> you had so many old guys, which I thought they could make it work, which they didn't. Mello, Howard, um, there was an, a Trevor Ariza, DeAndre Jordan, like really old guys that were just you like Trevor Ariza on your team last year. Yeah, awful. Absolutely awful. This year, even though they started off so poorly, a lot of people don't understand that they're younger with Lonnie Walker and guys like Dennis Schroeder, just speedy, young, athletic guys. Troy, Troy Brown's played really well. With me, how young it's is like, Dennis Schroeder? He's, I mean, young he's is then younger, younger than Mello and all these old heads. Um, for me, like. What Russ is doing right now, even though he was really inefficient last night, he's accepted and swallowed his pride, I think, a little bit, besides, and unlike last year, where not only is he willing to come off the bench, he's willing to just become an energy guy, which has helped so much. Even though he was inefficient last night, he was like 4 for 15, he had those two buzzer beaters. And I haven't even mentioned Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves has been playing out of his mind. 50, 40, 90 in his last 12 games, efficiency-wise. Uh, had 22 points last night. He has been unbelievable. So for me, like, I, I had the Lakers as a 5 seed coming into the season. Then they lost their first five games. It's a whole new roster. Everybody expects them. It, and, of course, I, I get it. They're L.A. They're the, you know, it's LeBron. You either hate LeBron or love LeBron. And uh, so the, it was like a, the, they're like the laughing stock of the league pretty much because they're always in the media. But for me, man, like, even though they've had an easy schedule these last few, they're winning these games. They choked one against the Pacers last night. That would have really helped as well. But um, they played I the like, Pacers last night. Or they played the Trail Blazers. They played the Blazers last night. But the couple nights before, um, they played the Pacers. Were up seventeen in the fourth quarter and blew it. Blew that one. Oh yeah, Pacers are good. 
they're solid, man. They're they're really solid. They're, they're kind of a surprise. Uh, um, but we can move on to college basketball. I got all my Bron talking. Hey, if I, if we're being fair, if we're being fair, I don't I don't talk of much Bron on here. I, I try to I try to keep it to myself a little bit. <laughs> Except when we start talking about the Lakers and you go on a little bit ten minute tangent about. Yeah. But hey, you man. sent me LeBron videos this morning, and I woke up and yeah. I was like, There's, "It's too early. I can't." It just pisses me off. I couldn't. I just couldn't look. I just couldn't. Uh, no, I, I give you your. Uh, I give you your Clemson and Clemson, fifteen minutes talk on here. So I got to get my uh, get my brawn in there. But uh, no. So what else we got? College basketball wise, there were some upsets this week, man. Some pretty big Actually. upsets. I do have to start before we get into the upsets. Oh, what North Carolina Col- lost last night. Yuri Dang. Collins, bro. Slew. 20 assists. Dang. <laughs> School record breaking his own They win? They did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they won by like 20 over Middle Tennessee. If they Middle lost, then Tennessee State. who cares? <laughs> yeah, facts. Um, so what upset we got? <clears throat> On Tuesday, that was the big one. Marquette over Baylor by 26. Number six, Baylor goes down. That, that was a huge one. And they're doing the ACC Big Ten Challenge right now. Uh, Virginia won a played... double overtime against Penn State. ACC won the challenge. <laughs> they had a <laughs> yeah, so they're doing the ACC Big Ten Challenge, and Virginia, number three in the country. We talked about how that's kind of like low key. They're number three. Not many people talk about that. Uh, they beat Michigan by two um, on the road. So that was a really close one. Michigan, I think, was up by like seven at half and kind of kind of choked that one. Um. Wednesday night, Duke beat Ohio State, eighty-one seventy-two. Uh, you mentioned North Carolina losing it again, bro. They 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 went from yeah, number one in the country, loss. number one in the country, all the way to number eighteen and three straight losses. That's Playing on the road in college basketball is probably the hardest thing. Yeah, out of any either either college football or college basketball, playing on the road I think is harder than to do than any other sport. Yeah, I agree. With like that. NFL, like the crowds aren't as mm-hmm. nuts or mm-hmm. NBA, you yep. know, until it's no, like I, actual I meaningful that. games. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. Now, North Carolina is in a tough spot because not only were they number one coming into the season, I think everybody, including myself, thought they were easily the favorites. So, not saying that they aren't going to be, be a Final Four contender because I think they still will be, but it's interesting to see where they're going to go. Indiana, another team a lot of people aren't talking about, they're <clears> number 10, 10 in the country. Yeah, um, seven or no. That they've been playing well, and then Notre Dame knocked off Michigan State by 18. So yep. uh, at home in Notre Dame, that's a big that's a big win, man. Big win. Don't like Notre Dame, uh, but North Carolina, I think they'll be fine. But they're like how they were last year. They have they play their starters the entire game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know I if any of them had foul trouble because if any of them have foul trouble, just is not good for them. <laughs> yeah, it's like a six seven man rotation. Um, that's exactly what the problem was last year. Yeah, Baycott and Nance both had four fouls. Yes, sir. I don't know I when it. they got it, but I'm assuming. <laughs> my boy Nance. Really. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? My boy Nance. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin from Northwestern. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a big game tonight that's going on. You mentioned yeah, it last episode. Right now. Creighton, Texas. Yep. Creighton, yeah, that's a big one. one. Yep. That, that's I a big like one. both these teams. So This weekend... Uh, Baylor Gonzaga, Gonzaga for the first time in a long time. I, I would have to double, you know, fact check this, but it's been a long time that they've not been a top 10 team in the country ranked. They're sitting at number 14, and you know, as a Gonzaga fan, deservingly, deservingly so, man, they have not been playing, yeah, they're playing real competition, a couple multiple like back to back, and it's yeah, you can't play with the big boys. <laughs> where, where, so, where does your Gonzaga hate <clears throat> come from besides me liking them? It's because they play no one the whole regular season, uh-huh. and they like go lose one or two games, usually to San San Francisco on like a Thursday night, yeah, yeah. and then they're number one overall in the tournament. Everyone picks them like, oh, Gonzaga's gonna win. I'm like, they play the Sons of the Blind every week, <laughs> and they go up against a, a school that's been facing the top, like the Big Twelve, a couple years, multiple years has like eight teams ranked in the top twenty five, yeah. and they play them back to back, like yeah. Clearly, shouldn't you like that though? Because then you're you're everybody's uh like mine usually. The, my brackets usually busted so early because I'm like, oh, Gonzaga's got it. I never pick Gonzaga. 
because they never that, have it. I know that's what I'm saying. Like you should like it then, because everybody's brackets are getting busted. I like that they lose, but I don't like that they're number one. I just uh-huh. never want them. I want them to always have these successful seasons and never win a championship. <laughs> It'd be awesome. <laughs> You should just hate the media then. You shouldn't hate Gonzaga. What what they do? <laughs> they're in that awful conference. Join the Big they, Twelve. They're just but now they uh, started losing to all of them. They're probably I like, oh, will just stay and get a Western. Uh, what's your? I don't even know their conference name. Um, yeah the I get the Mountain West and the other one West West Coast West, West Coast, Coast conference. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mountain West is like San Diego State and all them. Yeah. Their only competition, St. Mary's, and then yeah. BYU is solid, but yeah, they beat them, and they're like, oh, they beat a top twenty-five <laughs> team, St. Mary's, and then they both lose in the tournament at some point. But I do, I do remember you saying a couple episodes ago that I also goodness. don't like Kelly Olynyk. He just looks weird. <laughs> I <Dude>. either. <laughs> I don't even like Timmy, bro. I don't even like Timmy. Oh, that's um, what I said. But I remember you saying earlier, like recently, like you were hating on them because they wanted to join the Big 12. Like there was talk about them joining the Big 12. No, so I you want, want them, them to. You want them to? Yeah. Prove you're, that you're actually good. <laughs> if they join the Big 12, they'll probably actually could win a national title. Yeah. So it'd be I, I horrible think... logistically. You have to fly hundreds of miles every time That's to true. go play a game. That's true. I think it will only, it will also, it'll not only help them playing tougher competition all year yes they may they're probably going to lose a handful of them and they'll be um you know but you're playing tough uh, games every single yeah. time and have like they just blow out everyone it's not like you're going to have a a tight game uh like your players aren't going to be used to playing with the stress mm-hmm. of you know what i mean yeah no for sure <clears> so <throat> i was going to say like yeah they'll probably be like a five or six seed instead of a one or two seed but playing that tougher competition all year. And I also think you're going to bring in even more. They have solid recruits that come in. They don't have like those number one guys a lot. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Like they have Timmy and Kelly Olenek and, uh, you know, Zach Collins, like guys that stretch bigs that make the NBA, but nobody that. There's not a lot of guys who've come from Gonzaga that have been superstars in the NBA. Exactly. That's, that's exactly my point. And so I think they're going to get a lot more recruits wanting to play big 12 competition or acc or sc yeah. like sec mm-hmm. they well, honestly college basketball every conference is pretty dang good mm-hmm. big 10 solid right. big 12 is probably the best we um, talked the about big how the east a10 with, is underrated we talked yeah, about that big east has creighton uh villanova mm-hmm. seton hall um st john's what about the american that's uh, um, american cincinnati houston's in there oh man yeah dang uh UConn. There's like a there's like usually in each conference it seems like there's at least like three or two good teams. Yeah. No, I agree. I'm looking at the schedule here for this weekend, and on Friday night, San Diego State, number 24 in the country, plays a school called Occidental. Occidental. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, bro. They don't I'm even clicking have on a logo right now. I just found it. <laughs> they don't even have a logo. Oh, you click! Like... I click it on CBS Sports, and uh, it takes me to a page that says "fumble." Whoops! It looks like this page has been moved or deleted. <laughs> yeah, I think they're like a D two or D three school. Maybe That's a high wild. school. They might be. <laughs> they might be. <clears throat> but why is, why is Baylor playing Gonzaga in Sioux Falls, South Dakota? I do not know. But, you know, Baylor's going to be coming back wanting some revenge after losing to Marquette. Uh, Gonzaga's got to – they've started really slow, Gonzaga has, against their loss against Texas and their loss against uh, – who was the other loss? Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Duke? No, they didn't play Duke. They had they lost to another a tough competition. Uh, Purdue. Mm. They got blown yeah, out by dude. Texas and Purdue, and they started really slow in both games. And that's they got to come out ready to roll. Um, but yeah, man, I could go on a little Washington the Mizzou, basketball. Mizzou Kansas. KU game next weekend on Saturday. Mm-hmm. It's sold out. They had a Mizzou women's basketball game, and they, as an incentive, they said if you go, students who go to the game get an extra point or something to go towards getting a student ticket. And the line was like wrapped around the building crazy i'm so I, i'm so hyped for that game because mizzou's actually yeah. i think mizzou could 
could beat them. It's at home. Uh huh. They're I know they haven't played great teams yet, but they're averaging ninety three points a game. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I could go on this little Washington basketball tangent because I've been following them this year, but uh, I don't think people would be too interested in that. <laughs> so yeah, okay, I'll go. I have to talk Clemson basketball now. So we won a <laughs> double overtime. <laughs> Scored a hundred points. We play Wake Forest tomorrow. It looks like mm-hmm. just found that out. Mm-hmm. We're eh, we're de- eh, we're okay. We got PJ Hall. He's fun to watch. It's it's up for grabs this year, man. I mean, obviously oh, we all we I always see March Madness upsets happen, but even like throughout the year, we've already seen teams at the top like Gonzaga, <clears> North Carolina, <throat> fall, and teams like Purdue that started unranked and just explode up to the top. So I'm hoping with SLU having a pretty easy record or easy schedule coming up before their uh, conference starts, I, I'm yeah. hoping SLU can ho- kind of hop in the uh, top 25. That'd be pretty dope. But you have yeah, I'm a, looking at Saturday for college basketball, and uh, it's not looking too not doing it for you. Too exciting. Yeah, hey, you should go to the Slu game Saturday. It's in at home. Yeah, that's funny that you said that because um, I was actually thinking about thinking about going that because I, I was looking up their schedule. It is at yeah, yeah. I don't know what there's what's the afternoon college football game. I think it's Tulane. It's that Amer- American or something. Mm-hmm. Something I will not watch. That's a uh, perfect transition because I was going to say you have a pretty big weekend. It's college football championship week, which kind of bittersweet, right? Yeah, like we'll win. I'm I'm talking like all around because it's like the ending almost, but at the same time, it's like a big weekend of of college. The football. ending of like college football. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, I remember when we started our preseason like positional rankings and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Now we're at the end. R.I.P. College football. Yeah, but let's give our we got to give our uh, our picks for some of these games. It's championship. I'm excited. Game. College football and then the selection shows Sunday at like noon or something. Um, oh, I got a I got a bone to pick. Is that the phrase? Is that the phrase? Yeah. Why is Washington still 12? How are we not top 10? I have to look at the top 10. That is insane to me. They dropped, jumped up like one spot. Okay, I know your team is. <laughs> it's because you're okay. You are ten and two. Who have you beat? Who have you lost to? The losses UCLA, not a bad loss, and the the only bad one is Arizona. Mm. And yes, that's a bad loss. But the Michigan State win doesn't look good at all now. <laughs> or Arizona State, Arizona State, I should say. My bad. Arizona. Ooh, State. Arizona State. Yeah. Um, not a good, not a good loss to have, but like Tennessee, man. Like Tennessee is better than you guys. Yes, but are we counting without Hooker? Would okay. So I heard this, and someone was saying, if Georgia right now, if they had their whole entire starting offense was like their starting people were out injured, we then they're undefeated. Would you still have them ranked number one, or would you rank them like ten? I would rank him like 10. I would rank him number one. They won all the games. But then... Joe Milton's not even that bad of a quarterback. Yeah. For me, like, we... The thing is, Tennessee had those two... What, two in a row, right? Two off losses. Got blown up by 30 to South Carolina. And then... What was the other bad loss they had? They lost to... Because they were undefeated, I thought. Oh, my God. Georgia, who's the number one team in the country. How bad was that loss? It was by like 10 14, or 15. 14. Okay. Also, um, Tennessee has like the hardest schedule. I said like the hardest schedule in the country. What they about like beat, Kansas State? Tennessee should be over Alabama, though. That's the one thing that's really dumb. Mm. Yeah. They have a better record. They beat them head to head. That's mm-hmm. kind of the main comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, Tennessee's first in overall offense. They beat. Um, LSU, who's like blew out LSU, blew out Kentucky, who's not that good anymore. Um, beat Bama, yeah, and the SEC is harder to play in than the Pac-12. What about like Penn State? I don't. I want. I want Penn State, and I know we won't play them in a bowl game. I think you guys mm-hmm. will get them in the Rose Bowl. Uh-huh. Um. Because Ohio State said they don't want to play in the Rose Bowl this year, and they're going to play. They may play us in the Orange Bowl. Yeah, 
which I don't want to play that. Actually, they're kind of so how that how that is it, how that works. Is it like certain conferences play in certain bowls? Yeah, so the Rose Bowls historically uh, Big Ten and Pac twelve, but Ohio State played in it last year, and I think they're like saying they don't want to play in it this year because they played in it last year. Mm-hmm. So then, if they don't, then it's the second best team in the Big Ten or not Big yeah Big Ten. So then Penn State would um go play in it. And then the Cotton Bowl, I think, is an SEC team versus the group of five. So, like, Tulane or whoever wins the American Conference. And the Orange Bowl is ACC versus literally any conference. And then the Sugar Bowl is SEC versus, I think, anyone. And then the other two, the other ones are the playoff. Yeah. So there's yeah, I was hoping there was a, some kind of chance that uh, Washington could play Clemson. That'd be fun, but like it looks could, like yeah. looks like not maybe not likely. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know. I feel like even Utah. I mean, they're a three loss team. Um, they are in the Pac-12 championship. Yeah, I, I guess that's the sole reason they're slightly above us. But like, I understand USC. I understand like the t- the big three at the top there, but. How do you feel about USC being in the, in the college football playoff as of right now over uh, Ohio State? What well, you think? Do you think Ohio State should be in it? After the loss to Michigan, it's tough. Um, I, I think I don't even think if I know if TCU TCU loses, Ohio State will go in. I think if they lose, they should not go in, or they should stay in. Ohio State. Didn't get to their conference final. TCU's undefeated, made it to their conference championship. They've already beat Kansas State, who they're playing. To me, Ohio State should not get in, but I could see, heck, even if TCU wins, the committee's like, oh, we got to have Ohio State. And so that's that's where I have the problem with college football compared to college basketball is I have such a hard and, and they're changing it, which is good, yeah. in my opinion. I have such a hard time seeing a team like Ohio State play so dominant all year, lose one game to Michigan fairly. It was bad, a bad loss. Like they got blown they got destroyed out. at home. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, not have a chance to play for a national title because, and again, this this argument I'm making it has doesn't mean a lot because they're changing the rule anyway. But uh, I just have a hard time, and they're going to twelve, right? Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. And I I've think it should be about eight. How much I like that. I think it should be, yeah, eight. And then you have the five conference champions automatically get in, and then three wild cards. Let's talk about this again then. So, so why do you like eight over twelve? Because twelve is a lot. I I like that there's expand like expansion because mm-hmm. I know the first games are going to be like whoever. It's going to be the same teams usually who are going to be in the, the final four because they're just way better than everyone else. Uh-huh. Like, I'm excited about 12 because they'll have home games for the first, which I think would be sweet. If they don't, that That'd would make nice. me really mad. If that they would be play dope. them in, like, random locations. Yeah. Because that's another thing I don't like about college football is they'll play uh, um, those bowl games. I think they should have championships set like multiple locations depending who plays. Because when Clemson played Alabama, it was in California, San Francisco. Like yeah. play it in somewhere closer so both mm-hmm. a lot of people can go. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so for me, I, I like the idea of having, I'd have to do the math to see if this would work out. <clears throat> yeah, 32. I like 32. That's way too many games. But why? They're going to be playing like 20 games. And it's not like basketball. You go run around. It's like you're literally killing each other. So shorten the season. Then it, it re- there's no point of having a season. Then no, shorten the season to where you don't play. You don't. We don't see Alabama play some mid major halfway through the season. There's, there's no point. So have like a ten game season, nine game season, whatever it is, and then have the chance. So a lot of people have told me when I say this that. Oh well, Georgia's going to so win the teams it anyway. who don't get in it only play ten games. Don't get to play two more games. Do they? What are they going to do? Just after ten what? games, they don't make the playoff. They're just done. Do like a uh, figure out a way to do like an nit or whatever. 
another little tournament. Yeah, For me, uh, everybody keeps telling me the same thing, and I can't get with it. Georgia's going to win no matter what. No, they're not. You know why? Because you know the why top, though the top the top teams it's so like it's not like college basketball it's so yeah, no no i get that but moving on like they have to play a whole playoffs they have they're going to get worn down like we saw not georgia they get it. a buy they'll be number yeah. one <laughs> yeah yeah but like not a buy all the way like we're gonna It'll see be exactly where... where they are now they have to win the semifinal the game then win the championship i want to see it where not only a team like UCF right now they get an opportunity to get a chance to win something big but also a lot nobody agrees with me but I'm I'm okay with being the guy that stands out with this because it, it, I'm I don't like it at all because I'm very passionate I want everybody to get the equal opportunity and chance here yeah then that's also, why you had to take the regular season has to mean something you have to win if you go undefeated then you'll be in the top 12 even if you're not a power five Cincinnati I, I, wasn't a power five. They went undefeated and they make it to they were top four. I I just I don't like the argument people give of like Georgia's gonna win it no matter what, because we can see an injury happen and then I think everything changes. Or let's then say Alabama played, would win. Let's let's say they <laughs> or played, Ohio State or Michigan or let's say Clemson. they play Clemson. Let's say they play Clemson and Clemson just wears them <laughs> down all game and they get eliminated. <laughs> now now Clemson gets a better chance of winning it all. You know, like I don't think personally the difference between Georgia and Clemson is huge. I don't think that's a massive – on any given night, I honestly believe like a team like K, uh, Kansas State, Utah, I think they could knock off one of those big boys. And we didn't mention Michigan, uh, their star running backs out. Yes, their backup running back went nutty last week. but Yeah, I think they're fine. <laughs> it's just, Honestly, I think Purdue's going to beat them with all due respect. I could see Purdue it. Purdue doesn't lose – to top ranked teams. Their head coach is undefeated. Mm-hmm. They somehow win. Yeah. Michigan's getting all hyped. Their fans are like, we're winning the national title game, which they're just going to get destroyed by Georgia in the national title game. We all know mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm what I think Purdue can pull an upset. So, yeah, I, I, I get 32. not having, yeah, man, why not? I, I get, I'm, I actually did a, re- no, I did a report on this in class. And I had the class vote, and half the cl- over half the class voted. They they agree with me, because I we all want the opportunity of. It's exciting. I don't like watching college football regularly because I don't like seeing Alabama, Alabama. Let's see. Oh, Michigan. Oh, Georgia. Oh, Clemson. Every year, it's not exciting. They it's play like exciting. two games against a bad team, just you know, kind of get the plays going, and then the rest of the time it's usually against their conference or solid teams. If you don't like watching them game, go watch Georgia play someone else or another team play. There's so many like good games going on. It's not like everyone just watches Georgia every single week, unless you're a Georgia fan. Like I watch Clemson every week, even if we play Louisiana tech and I'm like, yeah, I'm into but it. That's the thing is like, you even Mizzou. Louis- like, I don't like, there's no parody in college football ever. Like Cincinnati was a was a crazy thing last year, and like people, people like to make the argument that's what it's like in the NBA, but it's not. Like college football is the most is the one sport where it is the same every single year, and I'm hoping the twelve teams change it because I, I want to be. Some I excitement. still think it's going to be the same. The same four teams, the majority of the time, get into the the last four. Yeah. Well, I, I hope. I hope it's not like that. And I'm hoping so many games. Like the I'm champion would play stuff. like oh, it's a lot of games. Like four extra games. Mm-hmm. Five. But if That'd you sh- are you counting if you shorten the season? Seventeen like games. For not like professional athletes, like these are student athletes. But it's not for like student, it's- I mean, these are out I mean, if we're talking no, we're not talking lower school we're talking uh top 32 here i mean a lot of these guys are going to be drafted anyway they yeah unless the same... they get hurt in the playoff games the 30 playoff games they have to play hey it's part of it man if they're gonna i just don't and i've talked to a lot of i mean a lot of my family about this we don't like oh here's georgia and alabama again just like last year let's see who wins it this year i want so it's like, a good at... game though <laughs> it's a good game but like i want other schools to get opportunities and they will with the 12 team playoff. 
I this year, know, two man. schools or new schools could be in the top four. Mm-hmm. TCU, USC, different colors. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I think that's all we had college football. Though, I would right? take us against Penn State though in the eight versus nine match. <laughs> They do their um, little fancy white out, and we would just Yeah, I can't stand that. Destroy them. Let's finish off with our uh week Hold 13. On. Before before American football, let's talk about football. The FIFA World Cup. Yeah. Oh, I got USA. another I got another uh before you go on talk about USA, I got another spicy take for you. Is it about college football? Am I gonna get no, mad no. at you? No, it's not college football. You're gonna get mad at me. So, <laughs> so uh, you and Colin always rant and post all these flops in the NBA, and com- and uh, that one video of Ryan Whitney, Colin has sent like three times in the chat, comparing NHL to NBA. What's the point of it? He's not wrong though. No, but what's the point of it? What's the point of what? The video of saying like what NHL players are tougher. What's what's the point? I think he was just saying that he thinks they're tougher than NBA players. But like, my point is like, what's the point of it? Because soccer is the most common sport in the world, and their flopping is insane. It's not even. Oh close yeah, to it's NBA. literally a part of the game. Yeah, it's not like they penalize him for flopping. So it's like you might as well do it. <laughs> so I I just don't understand the NBA hate for flopping, but soccer floppings. I don't think a lot of people like soccer flopping. They just don't do anything about it. And now it's just, it's been going for so long. Uh-huh. Everyone's just like, everyone gets mad and they'll still call it. I don't think anyone likes it, really. Yeah. I don't, I don't think know. anyone likes flopping. To me, I think no, it's honestly smart. I think I don't have a problem with flopping. I, I don't. But it's honestly all. very annoying <laughs> at the same time. It is annoying. I just don't understand. And it's not just you guys. I don't understand the NBA hate. What did, for what, what did that have to do with NHL being tougher? What do you mean? You started saying the NHL yeah, I, I, video is tougher. What does that have to do with flopping? Because I don't understand the point of saying like injuries to NBA players compared to NHL players when soccer players get and why are you hurt including all soccer players in it too? If it's because, NHL versus NBA. Because I'm saying I understand NHL players are tougher. Yeah. Then, why don't we talk about soccer players like that? Like you guys just want to hate on NBA for no reason. Because soccer's like you barely it's not that it's not huge in America. I've watched it, it, more it is, though. But like, I watch more basketball and whatever other sports than soccer. I don't watch soccer on the regular. I do will watch the FIFA World Cup this Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I just I just think NBA is overhated by you guys for no reason. They do travel a lot. But maybe they they're fixing it. And soccer players get stretchered off the field for getting... Dude, the ref smacked a guy on the back the other day, and he got stretchered off the field. Yeah. Like what is he, that? He he's a he he went to school for flop and he is he won an academy award. I guess so. I guess so. All right, so you can talk you can talk USA now. Yeah, USA AJ's least favorite team. Um, they're playing this Saturday, 10 a.m. against the Netherlands. Uh should be a hard game. We won on whatever day that was Tuesday. I think so. Yeah. Yep. Um, Pulisic. Took one in the growing, growing, growing. Why can't I say that right? <laughs> growing, growing, groin. groin. I couldn't get the oin out. The groin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Captain America got the goal against Iran. Uh, now we go against the Netherlands, who's pretty dang good. They got uh, Virgil van Dijk, plays for Liverpool. They got a lot of defensemen. Frankie de Jong. Um, but, hey, you just got to get there. Anything can happen. Um, I think Pulisic will be back. If we win that, we'll most likely play Argentina. So that'd be kind of fun playing some Messi. Yeah. Uh, I guess some other big things that happened. Germany didn't make it. Japan won their the the group. Mm-hmm. I think there was a controversial call. There was. Like the ball yeah. was kind of out of bounds, but they didn't call it out of bounds. Looked pretty out. Yeah, it looked very out. Mm-hmm. And now we have to watch Japan instead of Germany. So yeah, ooh, ooh, Croatia, Croatia's <laughs> going to beat them. Uh, they play Croatia. And then Belgium got knocked out, which they're like the second ranked team in the in FIFA. So the field's set, except two matches aren't set yet. I think they play probably tomorrow. But Netherlands versus US, Argentina versus Australia, Japan versus Croatia, and then England's facing Senegal, France is facing Poland, 
Uh, Morocco's facing Spain. I think an England France showdown. If they win their first rounds, that'd be a very very fun game to watch. USA versus England in the national championship game, or the not the national championship game, the World <laughs> Cup final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't beat. We don't lose to England. We literally have not lost to them. Mm-hmm. We beat them in like 1950. Then we just tied with them the last two times, and then we beat them in 1776. So, mm-hmm. so it all starts Saturday, right? Like the round of six, the round yeah. of sixteen. Yeah. Cool. So Excited. that's gonna be fun. Yeah, USA is back. Um, <clears throat> NFL Week 13. Wait, wait, we didn't even pick who we thought we were gonna win these college football championship games. Oh, we didn't. We got we got too busy arguing. Yeah, AJ uh, kept saying he won 64 college football teams. In the 32, playoff. 32. Uh, yeah, let's go through them. Are we just going through like the ranked top 25 here? Like the the conference championship games? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, Utah, USC. I'd say USC because it's not at Utah. It's at a neutral site. Okay, I, I agree, USC. And Las um, Vegas. Caleb Williams is very good. You may win the Heisman. Yeah, he's been unbelievable, bro. I really want a USC. I know this may not happen the way the rankings are, but a USC TCU game would be so much fun. Mm-hmm. It'd be so many points and back to back, like just back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's what I want. I want like a, I want like USC to win it all, and I, I'm not even a USC fan. Like I'm, I want TCU to win it all over everything, but like if USC got the chance to play, I just don't want Michigan. Or honestly, I want TC. I don't like USC. Yeah, at all. Yeah, LA doesn't. LA doesn't deserve to have any football team be successful. They don't even support anyone. True. Facts. They shouldn't even have a football team in LA. Um, let alone two NFL teams. Well, I guess college uh, is different because you know they are university, but <laughs> yeah, university, they can't, but... can't move or anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, TCU, Kansas State. I got TCU, man. Thirteen. I'm going TCU. I need them to win to get in. What about LSU, Georgia? Georgia by a million. Agreed. Uh, Not even close. What about Central Florida at and uh, a Tulane? Let's go Tulane. I want Tulane to go and then play LSU or someone in the Sugar Bowl and beat them or Tennessee. That'd be very funny. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Central Florida just just for you would, just for you just for fun just for fun. Uh, you gotta, you um, gotta about, ride the green wave. What about Purdue, Michigan? You said it earlier. I'm going Purdue. The upset's Dang. happening. It's Dang. happening. Purdue I just has right. this funky mojo whenever they play a team that's in the top five. I know it's not at home, but hey, it's in Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. And it's close to uh, West Lafayette mm-hmm. in Indianapolis. So go Boilermakers. I hope you're right. I'm just going to go Michigan just to play it safe. Man, they could win that. I hope you're right. The Big Ten football championship and the basketball one too. Yeah, that's actually wild. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sure someone's the showdown done that before the massive showdown, Clemson. North yeah, Carolina. massive showdown, kind of the lame showdown now. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going with Clemson. Yeah, the game plan should be just give it, give Will Shipley 30 carries and give Phil Moffa 30 carries. If DJ mm-hmm. throws it more than 20 times, I don't know. Our receivers just aren't that good either. I say like Cade play too. Who cares? I'm gonna just I'm gonna just uh give you a punch in the gut and go tar heels. <laughs> well you would. Drake May's been playing kind of bad lately too. He has, he has. Somehow we yeah. scored thirty Come points last week and DJ was through for twenty, like twenty nine percent completion. So mm. somehow we're scoring. Yeah. But yeah, you need to feed Shipley for sure. Yeah, just not throw it. Just so, uh, in the NFL, there's only one, or I guess two teams that haven't have a bye this week. That's the Panthers and the Cardinals, I believe. Good. So a lot of games. Yeah, man. Um, everybody played last week, didn't they? No, there was buys. Oh, was there? The buys stopped like week. I just thought it, I thought there were 16 games last week because it was Thanksgiving. <laughs> Maybe I don't know because I think I was 10 and 10 and six. Um. But starting tonight, while we, I mean, it's just about to start here. Bills, Patriots. I'm going Bills on the road. Oh, that's just, tonight. I mean, just uh, slightly. Will I watch that game? Mm, <laughs> nah, probably not. You're going Bills slightly. Yeah, 
Yeah, sure. I'll go Bills. It's just, I think the Patriots defense can keep them in it, but <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like the Bills Bills offense is. I'm I'm taking Josh Allen over Mac Jones pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mac Jones. Um, he's facing a lot better defense than the Vikings. So. Yep. Yep. What about Steelers at the Falcons? I'm going to go Atlanta at home. Steelers at the Falcons. Yeah, let's go Falcons. I like the Falcons. Mariota, Cordell Patterson, yes, some sir. other running back who's kind of good. The Algier, Tyler Algier. No, it's a different guy who I saw oh, a big run. Mm. Don't know his name. Gotcha. Um, but I would like them to throw it more. I know they don't throw it. I don't know if Marcus Mariota's thrown for over 200 yards this season. <laughs> Probably but... not. Probably not. Yeah, I don't know. What about Packers Bears? Packers. Aaron Rodgers owns the Bears. Facts. My exact reasoning too. Yeah. Uh Jaguars. And at what's the his Lions. face may not even play Justin Fields. So Fields, yeah. Uh Jags at the Lions. Jags, baby. We're, I'm, we're going, going, I'm gonna go Lions. I'm we're going, going Lions to the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said on our live last night. I think it's, it's actually gonna be, be a fun game. The Jags versus the Lions. It's gotta be the most fun game. <laughs> game with teams under 500 that i've seen uh, that are both kind of going in the right direction mm-hmm. yeah seven when was the last time the lions had four wins when was the last time the jaguars had four wins wild trevor's been playing good the lions have a fun offense they're uh jameson williams i don't know if he's coming back for this game their first round pick mm-hmm. but he may be coming back soon yeah that's another he was weapon. very fun to watch at alabama last year yeah 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 so fast uh, New, uh, New York Jets at the Minnesota Vikings. I got the Vikings at home. It's one p.m. Ooh, I don't know. We have to remember it's not Zach Wilson playing; it's Mike White. Mike White, yeah. I'm going Jets because of Mike White. That might be the first time either of us has have picked the Jets. All I don't like I the was, Jets, but yeah. I kind of like Mike White. I want him to yeah. play good, so I don't have to see Zach Wilson step on a there field again. Yes, sir. Uh, Commanders at the Giants. I'm going to go Giants at home, bounce back. Commanders, Giants are frauds, as I've said all year long. I Taylor agree. Heineke. I agree. Battle Hawks alum. What Third about string Titan- Battle Hawks alum? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which is seriously. very funny to me that the yeah. Tiamu, who I thought was a pretty good quarterback, no. Never got I mean, a chance. I still think Tiamu would be better than Tay Heineke in the NFL. Probably, probably so. Um, Tennessee Titans at the Eagles. I got the Eagles going down this week. Tennessee Titans with the dub on the road. Okay, real quick thing. Mm-hmm. It's very funny because on the Commanders Giants on CBS Sports as like a video underneath it, and it has Nick Chubb running it and a Tampa Bay guy trying to tackle him. So it makes no sense. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. What was the next game? Sorry. Titans Eagles. Who'd you pick? Titans on the road. Yeah, I'm picking Titans too, just because I don't like the Eagles. Mm-hmm. No analytics. I think, really I bad. Think a lot of people were asking for my reasoning last night, and my reasoning was. Packers almost beat them last week on the road, and I think they might have opened up some weaknesses defensively. Mm-hmm. And Tennessee, to me, the one word that comes to my mind is like tough. Tennessee just is a oh, tough yeah, team just... that, that can find a way to get it done. Derrick Run... Henry is a beast. Monster. He's so good. And also, Tannehill's been playing good. And uh, what's his face? Traylon Burks has been mm-hmm. kind of coming around. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Wait, hold on. Derrick Henry has a really fun nickname. Oh, they don't show. Yeah, you know what Derrick Henry's nickname is? Huh. Tractor Cito. <laughs> really? What does that mean? I don't know. Tractor Cito. It's like a tractor going through there. I don't know. Huh. But it's yeah, such not, a fun. I've not heard that one. I've, I I feel like I've heard how, where it came from before, but it's a very fun to nickname. Oh, Zach, Broncos, Ravens. Hmm. Ravens. I think I think we both know. Yeah, Ravens. What time um, is that game on one? Yeah, one your time. Good. What about you can watch Browns, other red zone games? Browns at the Texans. The return of Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. The Browns are gonna win. I agree. Browns. Dolphins at the Niners. Chunt them. Chunt them. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dolphins at the Niners. This game's gonna be good. It's my game of the week. My game of the week is always the Cowboys game, so <laughs> maybe it's a second. Okay. Actually, there's another good game of the week too that will be coming up on here soon. Uh-huh. Um oh, this is tough. Who 
Who'd you pick? <laughs> I'm going Niners. It's at home. In my opinion, I think even though the Niners are only seven, I mean, they're seven four is good, but like, even though you, like Cowboys have a better record and the uh, Eagles, I think the Niners, in my opinion, are my favorites to go to the, go to the Super Bowl. Do you trust Jimmy G? Like, I, do, I guess he did make it. Um, that, that's what I kept telling people last night. I was like, that's how you know I'm not biased with it because I absolutely hate the Niners being a Seahawks fan, but. Um, and I'm not a big Jimmy G guy, but I have to keep telling myself when you have enough weapons around you, like Tua, for example, like I've always been a Tua guy, but when you put Tyreek and Waddle around him, it's a different, like, you just got to get it to him. Hmm. Isn't Tua from Hawaii or he was born in Hawaii? Mm-hmm. I'll just go Dolphins because close to his home state, which is <laughs> honestly five hours away from California yeah. to fun fact. So it's literally a longer flight. I wonder how long the flight is from New York to California. I bet it's shorter than to Hawaii, but it's going to have maybe some family there. It's going to get it done. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Chiefs at the Bengals, man. I'm going Bengals. Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase's return. Two teams I dislike. Facts. If I could just abstain from picking, that would be my <laughs> first pick. But yeah. I guess out of respect for T. Higgins, Bengals. Love it. Uh, Chargers at the Raiders. I'm going to go Chargers on the road. Uh, not confident in that pick, though. Hmm. This is I where guess. the Raiders can turn their season. If they have any chance of turning it around, this is how yeah. they have to win. I'm going Chargers because I want them to win. Okay, I, I, I totally respect that. <laughs> the Chiefs will lose. They'll be 9-3. and three. But then the Bengals, oh, man, I don't, I don't I know. like that they're playing right now. I know. Um, Cowboys. Well, I got my Seahawks versus the Rams first. No, oh, dang. I got to go Seahawks, man. I mean, the Rams are in the dump right now. So many injuries. I don't know. Bryce Perkins. <laughs> Get out of I'll here. I'll go Seahawks. <laughs> uh, Colts at the Cowboys. Cowboys. I'm going Cowboys. And if you saw my video I posted on TikTok, did you see what I said about it? About what did you say? The Colts are going to win? No, I, I got the Cowboys winning, but I made sure I looked depressed the entire time I said it. <laughs> And then Michael Monday Parsons, night, defensive player of the year. He is a monster. Should be MVP. Zeke ran good the last game. Mm-hmm. Dak, if he doesn't throw interceptions, looks good. We got CD, Beast. Probably have Odell. <laughs> I don't really want Odell, though, but... Um, You're just making me stick to my stomach talking about it. Uh, like, we're actually, this- like... Good, which is crazy. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Saints at the Buccaneers to wrap off this week. I got the Buccaneers at home. Hmm. This is a big game in the NFC South. Yeah, it is. Oh no! Oh, I expanded I the screen. My there bad. I go. I'm going to pick the Saints because I want the NFC South to be really weird. Mm-hmm. If Jameis starts, 100 percent guarantee win for the. Saints. I hope Jameis gets a chance, man. I hope he gets a chance. Put Taysom Hill in there. Things get weird. Why not? Yeah, for sure. And then we're going to finish off here with our three boom and three busts. I'm going to start off uh, my my three booms. Amari Cooper versus the Texans. Ramondre Stevenson uh, versus the Bills tonight. Because, really? Yeah. No, you do know um, the Bills have a good defense, right? Yes, but no Damian Harris. He's going to get a lot of touches. So gotcha. I'm going to go I'm going to go Stevenson. And I, I think Amon Ross St. Brown is going off um, this week against, against the, the uh, Jags. Jags, yeah. Um, boom, Nick Chubb. My boy against Houston. <laughs> Always. Josh Jacobs has had really good back-to-back games. Chargers defense is not great against the run. Mm-hmm. That's a good so, pick. And if you were the Raiders, I would give him the ball a lot. Yes. And then I'm going to go Christian Kirk versus Detroit. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I think that I think that a Jags uh, Lions game could be pretty high scoring. Mm-hmm. My three busts. Tonight, I got Singletary versus New England. Me too, which honestly right. doesn't help anyone because the game we're just I know. Started, but... Yeah. Um, I think Miles Sanders versus the Titans, even though he popped off last week with like 143 yards and two touchdowns. I have yeah, him struggling. Two, yeah, <laughs> he's on the oh, face what? team. Oh, <laughs> then Matt then... got the win. I'm coming back. I am tied. I'm six and six now. I have slowly just keep winning. I'm still in the dumps. Man. I know how to build a team. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Pittman versus the Cowboys. I, I think Michael Pittman has a has a rough game. So we agreed on two. All right. Yeah. What was your other one? Uh, Miles Sanders. Mm. Mine is Christian Watson versus the Bears. His luck's going to run out at some point. 
Okay. But at the I same like that. time, that's a bad pick. It's the Bears. Yeah. That's a I want it to be a bust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because he kind of scored a lot against us, but it'll mm-hmm. probably be a boom. Gotcha. That was a bad pick after I kind of thought about how it comes <laughs> the Bears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to see I want to see what they do with that whole situation with Jordan Love and Aaron. And I want to see because he, he's playing through an injury, Aaron is. And if you're not if you're not trying to win, I want to see throughout the rest of the season. I still think do. the 49ers should trade everyone for Aaron Rodgers and they will win the Super Bowl next year. Throw in a bunch of picks. Yeah. And then you can be like the Rams and then suck for the <laughs> facts. Yep. But no, I'm gonna go uh go watch the blues versus Carolina right now. Um I don't know what your plans are the rest of the night, Zachary. Uh, I may watch into Texas Creighton. Texas is up by 10, I think, right now. Okay. Yeah, no. 11. Right on. So, may watch into that game. Right on. But we'll be back on Monday morning with another episode recapping everything and uh, another special guest. Big weekend. But we're not going to tell. We're not, not going to tell who yet. So, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Big sports have a good weekend. weekend again. Huge sports weekend, man. Huge sports weekend. I got my Raptors hat on. Go Raptors, even though we got <laughs> annihilated last night. Uh, everybody have a good weekend, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.